Hello, I'm Lee Nagel from the Statewide Vision Resource Centre and I'm going to show you how a student who's blind might use the Pearl camera with open book to scan a print document independently. We've started by setting up the computer with a few things. I've loaded the open book software, I've set the camera up so that it works with the computer and I've arranged a default file location and I've organised open book so that it saves in a Word document format. And here I have my handout in print. And this handout's got some columns, some pictures, and a couple of things that we probably won't need necessarily. Now we're ready to go and get the camera out. The student needs to practise unpacking this for themselves. So put the camera down on the table for stability and unzip. Take it out. Think about where the case is going to go because the student needs to be able to find this again later. And place the camera down on the table with the base on the table. There are buttons to press. There's a yellow button at the base. Press that. While you're pressing it, you can open up the first part of the arm. There's a yellow button at the top as well while you're holding that you can move the arm again. Be careful because when you press the button it becomes very loose and you don't want it to break. There is another um, thing to do at the bottom. You need to just unfold that base area and that becomes the paper guide for later. Now let's organise it next to the computer so again you've got a neat workspace and it's easy to work in this area. The paper guide is here next to the computer I'll take the cable and plug into the other side of the computer so it's not in the way of my scanning. The student would then go to their computer. I've got JAWS running on it at the moment, which is likely that the student will be doing. And I'll press the Windows key to get the Start menu up. Menu, search box, edit, type text, and this edit field or press up or down arrow to move through items. This is Windows 7, so I've got the search box, but you have to adjust this according to what system you've got on your computer. So I'll start typing open book. O. o, open book o, o. All I had to do was type O, but I could have kept going with O-P-E-N until open book becomes the top choice and you hear that that's the option. Press enter. Enter, leaving it. Welcome to open book version 9.0 and read only mode. So the open book program's open. Papers in place, I'm going to press space. You heard a ding for ready and a photo clicking sound. I'm pressing control just to shush the voice, which is a JAWS command, but Open Book also uses the same command. And you can see that it's collected the text off the page it's recognised each black squiggle as a piece of text and it's arranged it on the page so that the words are there in a row ready to read. The student might want to just find out what's on the piece of paper. So they might just want to hear what it is and then shut the document. A couple of quick commands for listening to a whole document. Insert with down arrow. Quickly navigate within your document. Also and control. To read from where you were onwards, insert and down arrow. To shush the voice, press control. Once the students listen to as much of the document as they want, they might think, well, that wasn't what I wanted to hear. They might want to shut it straight away and not save it. That's probably option one. Um, once they're finished with it, they can close it by just pressing Alt and F4 at the same time. Hold Alt, press F4. Please vote dialogue. Same changes to Untitled 1, yes. It asked if I wanted to save the changes, and if this was something I didn't want to keep, I'd just press N for no. An open book has closed. <laughs>